costly construction delays. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein of coffee and I thought we'd have a look at this article shared to me by a viewer from Commercial Real Estate and it originally appeared in the Financial Review. We've discussed this in a previous episode. The issue is the supply of building materials onto several projects and builders were already highlighting potential delays to completion and inability to access materials. Some of these buildings apparently have 90%, you know, little spec houses, 90% imported materials. What does that tell you guys? So builders brace for a $200,000 a day due to the virus. Variation, I'd say that's called. Australia's building contractors are facing delays of at least four weeks in getting materials ordered from China-based factories, which remain closed because of the COVID-19 virus, threatening site shutdowns that could cost the largest projects as much as $200,000 a day in damages. The four-week delay is the minimum builders would face if all factories started up again tomorrow. It does not mean head contractors will pay developer clients the contracted delay fee for each of those days, but if shortages of cr critical materials halt work, they'll be on the hook for those sums, says the head of quantity surveying, WT Partnership. Okay, now here's, a, here's what happens. During a construction project, if the builder doesn't meet a deadline, that you can be charged them liquidated damages, and that's for the cost or the loss, it has to be fair and reasonable that the client incurs. So say you were doing a house extension and the builder delayed it by a month because they were just badly organized, something that they should have controlled happened. Then you you can write into your liquidated damages that you'll be compensated, you know, say $1,000 a week for additional accommodation costs, rent and transport and those type of things. It has to be a fair and reasonable thing. You can't say to Mr. Builder, oh, you didn't finish my house on time. That means you have to pay me a million dollars a day. You know, That'll just get chucked. You can sign that and it'll get chucked out of court right there. So here they're talking about just the cost for the potential delay due to the materials. Now, I would hope, I would imagine that because this is beyond the builder's perceivable control, they couldn't, they couldn't be charged liquidated damages for this. But we'll have to see. The factories have not gone back yet. I will not for another week. David Stewart, WT Partnership, Australia's Executive Director, told the Australian Financial Review on Wednesday. And here's another thing. We're hearing, out the, hearing that people in China, they're going to be forced to go back to work. Where we're also bringing 100,000 people into Australia. I wonder if they're going to spend a few weeks in Christmas Island just to make sure they're all okay before the university semester starts. I mean, let me know in the comments, guys. Are you going to uni? Are you worried? Are you worried? So, I'd have thought the minimum delay will be four weeks at least. The builders will try and work around. Some will reprogram. When they haven't got critical materials for a few days, that's fine. But when it gets into weeks, it's difficult to say, we'll just do something else. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, they can plan it around. They can make it work. Worst case, they may need to get from another supplier. All projects were affected by the problem, he said. Every crane you see on a building on the horizon is going to be affected by the delivery of materials. In an industry where materials account for as much as 20% of the total project costs that come from China, builders have already started warning clients of potential delays to projects, the Financial Review reported last week. While head contractors are already advising clients of possible delivery problems, they're reluctant to confirm delays which could result in them paying daily damages of between $25,000 and $200,000. I mean, it depends on the project, guys. They can be have a much greater range of that. Builders don't want to tell their clients yet, Mr. Seward said. But in terms of the meetings I'm sitting in, they're flagging clearly that this is an issue. So the warnings begin. Some of those clients are already aware ASX listed developer Cedar Woods told investors on Wednesday it was monitoring potential impacts 
that the coronavirus may have on the availability of building materials. Cedar Woods Managing Director Nathan Blackburn said his company had not seen any impact on its business from COVID-19, but had to monitor its effects. Well, it'll take time. The thing is, it will take time. I've got another article I want to look at with regards to ships are just bypassing China. There's Singapore. Apparently, there's a whole, all these ships just sitting there waiting, waiting. So what's going to happen, guys? We did think it was appropriate to flag the risk given the virus's impact on the broader Australian economy, Mr. Blackburn told the Financial Review. Mr. Stewart, whose consultancy advises banks and lenders to large CBD construction projects, said he was warning the lenders that delay claims were coming. We have to say to them, there's a very high expectation these jobs will be delayed, he said. Now, remember, we looked at this article, another article this morning, earlier today, or probably this afternoon, where there was calls for government, government to intervene in the economy, pick winners by building infrastructure projects. By building infrastructure projects. Now, let's put aside just the whole issue of the government doing that, going into debt to build you know, new roads. What do you think will happen if they aren't able to order materials? What do you think will happen if their machinery needs to be repaired or replaced and they can't get the parts in? Do you think that might cause issue with the infrastructure projects? Do you think that might cause issue with the delay and completion of these jobs? It's definitely something to keep in mind, guys. It is definitely an issue. So factories will have to wait until their workforce is able to travel across provincial boundaries to return to work before restarting production. Australia's contractors will then have to compete with much larger, larger customers for goods off the production line and will not be top priority. This risks further delay, Mr. Seward said. Well, we were also looking at another example here, which is, I'll bring this up. I will bring this up here. International trade delays. And I think we'll read through this now, particularly because, and I went through it in a previous video, but it's worth looking at again, particularly because of what happened. <laughs> well, the statement that we just read, that we're not top priority. Because let's have a look at this. Massive delays for products. And this is an unverified Reddit account. I work for the furniture business. My company has full furniture imported from China and for the made in the USA stuff, the fabric is imported from China. China makes over 40% of the world's textiles. For a few weeks, we haven't even been able to reach our Chinese vendors, much less get into contact with them. We've finally reached our biggest vendor who supplies all of our fabric. The PO dates, dates are insane. For our popular fabrics, we are looking at PO dates to mid-June as of right now. Less popular stuff, it's early August. That's just to get the fabric to the US factory. We're told if factories even open, they're going to be producing a fraction of the product due to employees being locked down in their home cities. We are already running low on our warehouse stock because income tax return is the busiest time of year. Once we run out, we can't even put in further purchase orders. Since we've already run out of lighter stocked Merchandise, it's been calculated. We've already lost over a million dollars in potential sales. My company is close to 100,000 employees and our jobs are seriously at risk right now. People are so focused on the virus that they aren't even realizing the hundreds of thousands of people that will be out of work if this continues any longer. It's not as simple as sourcing from another country. It's extremely expensive to relocate production to another country. It's also a very slow process. Even if this ended tomorrow, there's going to be a good chance that our company can tank for this situation. I've already been told by a friend in corporate to get my resume ready to go. The economic fallout from this is going to be life-changing. It's going to be life-changing. So when he's saying that Australia is going to, you know, a company with 100,000 people in the US, which is you know, wanting furniture, and that, that will go into furniture and joinery here for Australian builders. When he's saying that we're going to be at the bottom of priority or we're not going to be at the top, I tend to believe it. We're a small player in the Chinese pro production in terms of what we take on, he said. We just have to take our place in line. And there you go, guys. We are completely dependent on their nation with regards to our imports and exports, but what over 30% goes there. And we're a small player to them. We're a small fish. So this is definitely something to watch. And it really, really 
makes one think about all these arguments for more spending on infrastructure. I'd rather they look at reducing taxes for people. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, guys. If you are in the construction game, have you noticed these delays? What are your plans to deal with it? Or are you just going on a longer holiday? Thanks for watching, everyone. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Please share the content, get the word out there. If you're a fan and want to help us a little bit extra, there are a few ways you can. You can share the videos on social media. It helps the channel grow. You can support us on Patreon or the channel here on YouTube for a small monthly donation. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon and eBay for your consumer purchases or Independent Reserve and KuCoin for your crypto trading. We've got pocket squares for sale on our blog, handmade here by Rachel. Definitely not. You know, don't worry, guys. I've got enough supply. <laughs> We're stocked up. I don't need to bring the material in from China. And we also have PayPal if you want to contribute that way. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend, and I will talk to you later. Bye for now.